we are going to uh, look at our strain gauges, uh, basically in this kind of strain space, and we're going to do an example problem with these uh, rectangular and delta rosettes, and actually we're going to work with rectangular rosette first. So let's imagine we place this rectangular rosette on material near some type of concentrator, et cetera, et cetera, or complex stress rate that we don't know, we want to kind of figure it out. So we apply a load, and we obtain the following readings. So these are the strains that we read in microstrain, and we'll get to that in a second. So uh, we want to, from these strain readings, figure out what are the principal strains and the principal stresses, uh, and look at kind of the um, basically the rotation to get to this principal uh, strain state. Center for more circles, raise more circle, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sounds like a lot of work, but again, we're going to be able to kind of work through this. So. Remember, we've mentioned this several times uh, in the lecture, but our strain gauges cannot measure shear strains directly. So the measurement of any arm from, uh, the measurement from each arm is going to be only a normal strain. So looking at those values, uh, so we said that in A, we had a value, again, these are all in, uh, basically in micro strains, but in A, so in our A arm, we said we had 72, B, 120 and C, we had, I think it was 248, but let me just make sure. 248. All right, good to go. So 248. So these are all normal strains. So if I want to plot, why is this gamma over, or this gamma over 2? Because again, tensorial. So these are all normal strains, i.e., not shear strains. These are going to be normal strains. So I have a value at 72. These are all in microstrains, so 20 and 248. So I know for my circle geometry, I don't know what this, you know, again, this is different from our Mohr circle, right? Because our Mohr circle, we would have a shear, uh, you know, shear stress and then, uh, excuse me, a normal stress component and a shear uh, stress component. Here, we're only measuring the normal stress, so we don't know, we don't have coordinates here. We just know that at some point in this infinite you know, vertical line at 72, 120, and 248, our circle is going to intersect these kind of six points somewhere along. So we don't know where these positions are. We don't know. We have to figure this out. So one way we could figure it out is just, again, from circle geometry. So I need to figure out what is my, you know, if I want to figure out this point here or where, where I'm at here, I need to know the center of my circle. I need to figure out what the radius of this circle is. Again, this is not to scale. What's the radius? And then what's the, you know, again, from this particular point or whatever it is, what is the two theta angle to kind of rotate here? If I have those values, you know, you know, and then I could kind of draw this here. Once I figure out those values, I can figure out any rotation or any, you know, again, this is the rotation from this, you know, particular point here at 72 that will get me into this principal stress state. But once I have this C, R, and two theta values, I can move and go anywhere else I want to in the circle. I can figure out all the different values. So I have three unknowns, my center, my radius, and my two theta. So how am I going to figure out what is, actually, I do know these values. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, a little bit of misspoke. How am I going to figure out these three values? Well, I have three unknowns. I need to write three equations. So how do I know, or what relationship can I write from circle geometry? Actually, I'm going to figure out these in a second. I don't really know this just yet, but I will very quickly. How can I know, uh, basically, I, how can I write an expression for this relationship, this distance? Because I know that at the center, that my e sub a, my my strain in a is going to be at 72. So 72 times 10 to the minus 6. So how can I relate that relationship uh, between c, r, and 2 theta? Well, again, it's just uh, kind of simple, uh, you know, not simple, but again, it's circle geometry. If I want to figure out, I know that e sub a is 72. I could also relate that. Uh, it's going to be equal to my center. So if I do center plus, what is this uh, right here? What is this distance here? If I want to get to 72, I know that my arm in A is, uh, goes to 72. So if I want to write this expression, center plus what distance will give me 72? Well, it's R cosine of 2 theta. That's it. So that's one equation that we could relate again in circle geometry to get to this. What about B? 
So again, just the same kind of idea here. What about for B and C? Well, what do I know about the offset between A and C? Or uh, between A and B and then B and C? Well, if I solve that angle, that kind of, uh, this kind of two theta angle here, let's go back to this page here, back up here. Once I solve for this angle, I know that those, uh, those arms are offset. Oops, excuse me. Actually, it's up here. They're offset by 45 degrees. So I can, once I solve for theta here, I could write B is just going to be equal to what B is equal to. So I think it's 120 times 10 minus 6 is equal to C plus R times cosine of 2 theta plus 90. Why did I write 90? Because we're in the more circle space. So I need to, whatever this is, the real space angle, so it's that angle times 2. So again, that's the angle between A arm and the B arm. Because again, we're, we're related by this rotation in more circle space. So to go from, you know, once I solve this 2 theta value from he to here, you know, because again, this I'm just looking at these x values. So I know that this is the distance from here to here. Then I know the angle is just going to be, to go from A to B, it's just going to be here, is plus 90. What about C? C is just going to be 248 times 10 to the minus 6, oops, equals C plus R cosine of 2 theta plus 180. That's it. Again, and you could solve this in multiple different ways. You could start with C first. And you could, you know, you could draw a circle like this, where we have m over 2, strain, if I have, you know, let's just call this a, b, and c. And we know we're going to kind of draw through all these, you know, all those values here. I could start from the center, you know, if the, oh, excuse me, if the center is right here. I could draw and solve this angle here. Why did I cho choose here? Because I know that this rotation is counterclockwise, so I want those angles to be positive. But anyways, uh, here, the uh, angle to get the principal stretch would be, again, counterclockwise. So if I want to figure out what is this distance here, it would just be for E sub C. If I solve for this, again, this angle and this rotation first, it would be E sub C is equal to, uh, E sub C is equal to C plus R cosine of 2 theta. So there's lots of ways, and then again, you could go to B. You can start with B first. It doesn't matter. But again, once you solve for this first angle theta, now to get to A or B, you have to again include, so for A, it would be C plus R cosine of theta plus 180. Why 180? Because the real space angle between A and C is 90, and more circle space multiplied by 2 is 180. So that's it. That's all your work. It's just, you know, it's circle geometry uh, at this point. So that's all that you're kind of uh, basically solving for and working with. So now I have three equations uh, that, again, you can kind of read through the notes. It goes through a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer and a little bit slower. But this is kind of a nice picture, again, what we're dealing with here. So if I want to solve C, my, or actually, sorry, my E sub A is going to be equal to the center plus R cosine 2 theta. That's it. So I have three equations. I have three unknowns, so let's go ahead and solve that one out. I'm going to delete all my thermal pressure vessels right here. Control A. Let's delete this. Quicker kernel. Always a good practice. So let's go ahead and make sure. I don't know if that kernel quit. Oh, it did. So, actually, this is a nice example to kind of show you. So I'm going to say my E sub A is going to be equal to 72 times 10 to the minus 6. My A sub B is equal to 120 times 10 to the minus 6. And then my E sub C is equal to 248 times 10 to the minus 6. All right. And then let's go ahead and calculate these values out. So I can now solve for my C sub A. I said equal to C plus R times cosine of 2 times theta. I'm going to just leave it in radian mode. I'll solve it later in the other values. So I'm going to solve here. And so e sub a, e sub b is equal to c plus r times cosine of 2 times theta times 
Actually, I am going to do it in degree mode. <laughs> degree. So 2 times sorry, 2 times theta plus 90 degree mode. And then I'm going to do e sub c, set that equal to c plus r times cosine of 2 times theta plus 180 degree mode. So three equations, three unknowns. This is a solve for c, r, and theta. But first, let me close this. But let me also delete this guy. So solve this for c, r, and theta. And let's go ahead and evaluate that numerically. And I see that my center is this. So my center is equal to this value here. My radius, yeah, I don't need the, <laughs> my radius can't be negative. We're looking at magnitude here, is going to be this value right here. And now, and then let's look at the angle. So let's go ahead and pull that out. So get 298. Let's go ahead and look at the value times this. Degree mode. So minus 12.22 again, but again, we're looking at the, again, that positive, you know, that's this kind of rotation here, this two theta. So if you're in that initial stress state, wherever you're at there, uh, looking, uh, you know, corresponding to this drawing right here. So we know that this angle, if we're rotating, you know, whatever our normal stress state is, it's going to be that 12.2 degrees uh, angle. So again, you can leave that as. Again, it depends on where you're rotating, uh, where you're rotating from. Uh, and what you know, angle you're looking at. But yeah, and that's your theta. So that's it. Uh, that's kind of all the values you have. So you have C, R, and theta. So now we can figure out and do a lot more uh, kind of fun and uh, complex problems. What I want to look for is what's my principal strain, right? So I know that my E sub 1 is just going to be C plus R. I know that my E sub 2 is going to be equal to C minus R. So we can look at that and let's make sure those values are correct. Yeah, about right. I was generous on my uh, <laughs> significant figures there. Um, excellent. But I can also figure out these are my principal strains. I could also write out my principal stress state. So in this material, 2.20.7 times 10 to the 10. This is my Young's modules for this particular material. Again, for no uh, real reason, but just to match the numbers in the notes. Uh, <laughs> actually, it's, uh, basically, it's steel. So these are uh, for this problem. Piece of steel. And now I know that my right the expression for solve, my E1, actually solve for series equations. Solve. So I want my sigma 1 and sig 2. My E1 is that equal to 1 divided by y times my sig 1 minus nu times sig 2. And then my again, we're in plain stress state. Um, so once you're in that plane stress state, again, in the one, two direction, you're just looking for principal stresses. We're not, uh, we are not uh, assuming that kind of third dimension or third stress component here. Because on your, on your strain gauge, again, it's, it's flat, you know, you're looking at it on the surface. We're not looking at that through thickness component. So that'll make your life easier when you're doing problems. Divide by y, then sig two, two minus nu times sig one. Now let's go ahead and solve for C1, excuse me, C1, C2, two equations, two unknowns, and let's see if those match. 6.2 times 10 to the 7, excellent. And let's look at for oh, next page for, here we go, right here. And uh, this looks right, excellent. So from this problem, you can figure out, again, lots of values. Once you have this, uh, you know, kind of this rotation, you're going to be able to do lots, uh, and actually, the C, R, and theta, once you have that, you could almost solve, you know, virtually any other problem that uh, you can be given uh, in this, you know, uh, in this type of example. So, uh, we now have our principal stresses, principal uh, strain state, right here. Excellent. And we can do lots of different uh, kind of things. So, what would be the difference now if you had, in, this, in these expressions here, what would be the difference... If we now, instead of had the rectangular, if we had a delta rosette, 
Well, all that would change is our epsilon, in this particular example, epsilon sub a would be equal to c plus r cosine 2 theta, but then b would be c plus r cosine 2 theta plus 120. Why 120 and not 90? Because our angle is now 60 instead of 45. Excellent. So you can imagine now that I could be, um, I might give you some very interesting problems. So let's say, for example, that I asked you a problem like this. Same problem. So I had initially, I had this rosette. So I had my A, B, and C arm. This 45 angle here. 45, same problem here. And now, what if I asked you, I had a delta rosette, A prime, and then B prime, and then C prime. So basically, I had a delta rosette where the A was aligned here, and then with the A arm, and then, again, I want to figure out what's the strain in B prime and C prime. Well, I could do that fairly easily here, because I know that the expression for E B prime is going to be equal to C plus r cosine of 2 theta plus 120 degrees. And here, because my a arm is aligned, and my I know that my e sub a must equal, uh, if my e sub a must be equal to my e sub a prime, I know that those values of c, you know, this is the expression, c, r, and, co and 2 theta, those values must be equal to one another. So c, r, and 2 theta must be the same. So if I want to get the B prime and C prime values, all I have to do is just do C plus R times cosine of 2 times theta plus 120 in degree mode. Let's just make sure that we are in degree here. So that would be my EB prime. And then for C prime, it would just be plus 240. That's it. Again, you can now, you know, and then you can imagine I could do all sorts of, you know, I can misalign it here, and then you'd have to figure out what's this angle. You know, uh, there could be lots of different uh, of these kind of problems. And you'll see some coming up on the exam in the problem set. And if you need some more example videos, I'd be happy to provide those as well. Um, so there's lots of more rotations that could be coming. But again, once you find CR uh, and theta, then all you have to do is just, you know, rewrite these expressions. Once CR and theta is done, if you're looking at the same material, it's just going to be modifying this two theta. And again, this is why it's important to draw these pictures in more circle. If you try to just use the equations, it's going to get very, very messy. So draw a figure, get partial credit, and do well in the exam. So uh, sadly or happily for you, this is the last video for Engineering 110. Um, so um, you might have been expecting uh, kind of a different course when you came into instrumentation. You know, uh, instrumentation experimentation is a kind of a vague title, but um, I want to congratulate you on finishing the course and think back about what all that you've done. So. You have now your expert in statistics, Fourier analysis, design of experiments, mechanics, circuits, strain gauges. There's a lot of material that was kind of covered in this course. So um, congratulations. Do well in exam three. Um, uh, submit all the rest of your assignments. And then uh, hopefully you'll watch kind of the videos for next semester when we do kind of um, uh, we'll provide kind of a virtual experience for the labs. Um, unfortunately, you weren't able to experience that, but I think that the lab reports were enough for you to do so. So. Please always reach out to me if you have any other questions. Um, and if you ever want to kind of see some of these experiments or um, if you want any other example problems, I'm always happy to provide those. So please let me know and then I'll happy to post some more videos. Thanks and congratulations. I will see you all hopefully uh, in person soon once hopefully this ends. All right. Thanks. Uh, good luck and uh, do well on the last exam. Thanks. Bye.